Um, well, wait, is that under the order in council? Is that is that what governs the masks on planes? The order in council that expires on the 30th? Or is that a separate order altogether? Or is it just your authority? How does that work? Well, I'd love to be able to explain that in appropriate details. I think you should ask uh, you know, officials if they'll explain exactly how these different orders fit in different pieces. Does the mask mandate expire on September 30th unless cabinet renews it? The order in council of which uh, my department is responsible, expires on September 30th. Mm -hmm. But the, the one that governs wearing masks on planes, does that expire as well? Now for that purpose, for those, those details, I think you should ask your official. And so you're going to let it expire, right? There's going to be no renewal, so if you're unvaccinated, you're going to be able to travel well, to Canada on a plane? Two things. First, I have to go to the cabinet. Second, I didn't think about all of these important details. Because I just met Serge Savard and Yvan Cournoyer. No, you might not remember them because you're too young. Oh, you're but I remember Sarah <laughs> I was seven years old then. It's been an, an incredibly great uh, experience of my life. So I just feel very, very happy. And I wanted you to know that. But is the vaccine mandate being dropped? Is it? Comme j'ai toujours dit, je veux des frontières qui ont la moins de friction possible. En même temps, il faut garder les Canadiens en, en bonne santé. Comme j'ai dit, santé en premier, ensuite le voyagement. Et donc, on continue d'avoir ces conversations au sein du gouvernement. Mais je sais que si on peut assouplir ces mesures, ça va faciliter euh, la, la reprise de l'économie. Parce que notre économie canadienne va être en, en, pleine, en, pleine, en pleine volée, si on peut dire, quand le secteur du tourisme est repris. Mais je ne peux pas partager des, des confiances du cabinet. Je suis en train d'aller au cabinet. Donc, on laisse là-dessus là aujourd'hui. Le port du masque, est-ce que ça fait partie euh, des obligations qui sont considérées là, dans le vif? C'est très intéressant parce que c'est une des mesures que, toutefois, les scientifiques indiquent, même avec, euh, avec la saison de la grippe qui commence à se faire, que les masques vont aider à protéger les gens. Donc, c'est une considération très importante. Mais, comme moi et d'autres collègues ont dit, c'est une conversation active au sein du gouvernement. Et on va regarder chaque mesure et, et quand ici on a une annonce, vous serez les, les premiers à savoir. À quand vous attendez à une annonce? À, encore une fois, c'est une conversation qu'on est en train d'avoir avec plusieurs ministères, avec plusieurs collègues. Donc, euh, moi, ma mission, c'est de, de protéger les Canadiens, mais aussi ouvrir les frontières et faire certain qu'on peut vraiment avoir une saison printemps et pour les, les mois et les saisons à venir qui va être remplie de visiteurs de, de l'étranger. You know, sort of COVID uh, measures. Well, now Arrive Can in its current format. So it started as a digitization measure, and then we added the vaccine piece to it. But now you can do all of your CBSA pre-clearance as well. So, I mean, I've been able to come back to Canada after crossing a couple of international borders in the last little while, and I've seen the 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 evolution of Arrive Can. And you know, when I was able to travel to the UK with my partner before I was back in government and when I was in France earlier this year, you don't get anywhere in these countries without having to go through a, some sort of digital passport process. So if we're going to want to go from 22 million visitors in 2019 to something closer to 30 million by 2030, we're going to have to have a digital border. And that includes being able to be faster at the land border, but certainly much faster and much quicker at the air border. And is the, the mandatory element of that, is that contained in the order of council with the rest of the COVID measures? Or is the mandatory use of arrive can the authorities elsewhere? So the mandatory piece is the vaccine piece, and because that's how people prove it through the arrive can, that's how the that's how the order is is, is written, from what I remember. Um, so look, all of these issues are being discussed, and you understand that we're taking careful care to take a look at the science, but also make sure that as we get through the post acute phase of COVID, that we're able to do the right thing for our economy. Do you Come personally on. think we should keep the mask mandate? Look, I'm, I'm looking to take a hard look at the, at the science along with my colleagues. I think that keeping Canadians safe or making sure that, like, I don't want anybody being stigmatized. If you want to have a mask on because you think it's going to protect yourself, like I've seen in the press gallery, like I've seen with my colleagues, people should feel completely welcome and able to do that. As we get to the, the mandate piece, that's something that we're going to, we're going to look at. And once I've fully reviewed the science, I'll come back to you with a, with a firm answer. And I'm just trying to understand that if the order in council that expires on September 30th, if it's not renewed, does that mean the mandatory use of arrive can is also not renewed. That's my understanding. So so that's and we got to so that's why September 30th is an important day and that's why we're having these conversations with colleagues. Merci tout le monde. Thanks Bonjour. Good afternoon. Did you meet any of the hockey players? Yeah, I just uh, <laughs> I, I I just had actually a very um, wonderful 
uh, and moving moment with our amazing team. Uh, we've issued commemorative coins. Uh, Ken Dryden was really the driving force behind that happening and I was able to give them the commemorative coins. They're the first people who should get them and it's a real honor. And one thing that I said to them is they brought Canada together 50 years ago. I think they kind of did that again today and we need it. So it's really, um, I think, a privilege for all of us to have these Canadian legends uh, in our House of Commons today. You Thank you very right? much. Why drop the COVID measures now? Well, I think I have more to say. I ask my colleagues, we're just getting in cabinet now. It's always the bon time to look at the measures to make it more difficult for the voyageurs. That's for sure. C'est sûr. Ah, moi, je pense qu'il faut que ça soit fluide. Il faut, faut aller avec le temps. Puis je pense que plus on peut rendre ça facile pour les voyageurs, tant mieux. Tout en, évidemment, respectant euh, les mesures de la santé publique. Je pense que les gens veulent voyager plus facilement. Mais en même temps, ils veulent qu'on les protège dans, dans leur voyage. Alors, je pense que c'est la balance qu'on va trouver. Mais on aura plus à dire. Merci. Very pleased to report that since the depths of the pandemic, travel is up um, somewhere between seven uh, and eight times fold, uh, which I think is positive news. Uh, we've welcomed well over 30 million travelers in 2022, which is at this stage uh, more than the twice uh, the, the total number of travelers that we uh, saw uh, come to uh, to Canada in 2021. So all of which is good progress. And obviously, we'll uh, continue to follow the advice uh, that we get um, from our health experts when it comes to our posture at the border. But Understanding you can't share the decision that you made today, was a decision made? Well, look, uh, at every single juncture when it comes to the border, we have always followed the advice of our public health care experts, which is um, precisely what Canadians expect us to do. Um, it's important that we continue to listen, engage where we were at in the pandemic and adjust uh, accordingly. We uh, have done so. We've eased a number of uh, restrictions over the last number of months. And when we are in a position to communicate uh, exactly what the decision is, uh, we will do so. Why are you so last minute in order to tell the Canadians what to expect after September 30th? Well, uh, look, we've uh, communicated in a timely fashion. We want to make sure that um, Again, we're consulting broadly with our public health care experts to understand, you know, what if any risks there are going forward. But as I said, we have eased restrictions. Uh, we've done it in an incremental way. We've done it in a responsible way and one in which I think Canadians understand. Donc, une décision a été prise. Uh, comme je l'ai dit en anglais, uh, 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 À chaque étape, dans le contexte de la pandémie, on a pris des décisions qui étaient basées sur les preuves, sur la meilleure médecine et sur le conseil de nos experts qui travaillent dans le secteur de santé publique. Ça, c'est la façon qu'on prend des décisions et uh, s'il y a un changement, on va communiquer uh, avec tout le monde. So, just to take it from your answer, then, was a decision made? Can you just clarify that? Well, as I said, um, uh, if and when we have a decision to communicate, um, we will we will do so publicly. I know you've taken now three or four cracks at it. So anybody else? I'm wondering if you know for travelers in a post uh, travel restriction world, what is what is the advice for travelers? A post travel restriction world? Uh, yeah, I mean when when the restrictions are lifted, whether it be September 30th or later, what is the advice to travelers in terms of you know if you're feeling symptomatic? I mean, some people feel like once the restrictions are lifted, the pandemic is over, right? And so how are you balancing that? in your discussions? Well, I think we're balancing it by continuing to consult and to listen to the advice that we get from public health care, health care experts, which has been the North Star of the way in which we've taken decisions throughout the pandemic. And as I said, uh, with each uh, passing stage, and as we've seen Canadians get vaccinated and we've seen, um, you know, uh, positive uh, trends in, in directions, we've eased restrictions. And I think, um, you know, we are seeing more Canadians travel, and that's good, as I said at the outset. 
Uh, we're welcoming um, many more travelers this year uh, to Canada than we did uh, in 2021, and we'll continue to make good progress as we can. Thank you very so much. Can I ask you about some of the requests the Ukraine's brought forward? Is there anything Canada can give to them that they've asked for? We are continuing to have discussions with Ukraine and I with Minister Resnikov. I've been in touch with him weekly and I'm talking to him routinely about what it is that Ukraine needs. And our strategy thus far has been to make sure that we are responding specifically to what we're asked to do. So for example, uh, Minister Resnikov specifically asked me about armoured vehicles. We have committed to delivering 39 armoured vehicles. He specifically asked me for cameras for drones. We worked with industry and L3 Harris in particular to make sure we are sending uh, and have sent more than 50 cameras for drones. So that's my strategy. Make sure that I'm working directly with Minister Resnikov to provide the aid that he specifically asks of me and that's what our conversations are about right now. Should I excuse? Can I ask you quickly about the legislative review for vaping? Because I know you announced the one for cannabis today. Yes. Um, the one for vaping is still pending. Do you know when you plan to come around to that we are working very hard on that we know it's really important there's been lots of feedback mm -hmm. um, and uh, we are uh, you know it, the evidence you know is I mean there's people on my, all sides of it but we're gonna learn as much as we can and then uh, uh, be able to, to review and, and take a decision. How much overlap do you see between that and the cannabis review? Well it's it's interesting because whether we're working on tobacco cessation and getting down to 5%, whether it's alcohol and the warning, you know, the call for warning labels or how we change people's habits. Uh, the fact that COVID people are really admitting that there, there's more struggles with mental health and substance use and, and maybe that's allowing people to be a little bit more honest uh, about things. So we, uh, I, I think they all come together and in different acts, but, uh, but I think that we're trying to be coherent and consistent in terms of getting Canadians the best possible information we can. Do you expect there to be any overlap in the reviews themselves in terms of you know, cannabis vaping, for example, and the impact of that on youth? Absolutely, and I think that each of the studies will have to ad admit where there's the intersection. Um, a lot of the experts, like Dr. Peter Selly and some of the people at CAMH who have been very helpful to me on so many things and so you know I think that it's great that we have such amazing expertise here in Canada but we always know we have to listen to the people with lived and living experience in uh, and how we how we go forward. So do you think that the vaping review could happen before the end of the year given that the cannabis one is just now underway? Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> okay, nice chat with you, Minister. And did you want to see my my uh, my picture of Paul Henderson signed <laughs> sweater with the hockey frame uh, that sits in my constit office. <laughs> I got no to show it to him. Uh, so yeah, so it, uh, I gave it to my husband years ago and then took it back from my constit office. <laughs> <laughs>